namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam 11.8.8. Please check your cell phone if you haven't already and see that it's silent. Yoshit Dharanya Abharana Ambaradi Dravyeshu Maya Rachiteshu Murtha Pralobhitatma Hi Upabhoga Buddha Patangavan Nashati Nashtadrishtihi Yoshid Tiranya Paranam Paradi Dravyeshu Maya Rachiteshu Mudha Pralobhitatma Yupapoga Pudya Patangavan Nashati Nashadrishit Nashtadrishtihi Yoshid Dhiranya Paranam Bharati Dravyeshu Maya Rachiteshu Mudha Pralobhitatma Yupabhoga Pudya Patangavan Nashati Nashta Drishtihi Rachiteshu Mudha Pralobhitatma Upabhoga Buddha Yoshitiranya Paranam Bharati Dravyeshu Maya Rachiteshu Mudha Ladies Rachiteshu Mudha Pralobhitatma Yupapoka Pudya Patanga Vadnashati Nashta Prishtihi Shidhiranya Paranam Bharati Pralobhitatma Yupapog Buddha Patangavan Nashati Nashta Drishtihi Yoshit of women Hiranya Golden Abharana Ornaments Ambara, clothing, Adi, and so on. Dravyeshu, upon seeing such things. Maya, by the illusory energy of the Lord. 
Rachiteshu manufactured. Mudha, a fool with no discrimination. Pralobhita, aroused by lusty desires. Atma, such a person. He, certainly. Upapoga, for sense gratification. Buddha, with the desire. Patangavat, like the moth. Nashati, is destroyed. Nashta, is ruined. Drishtihi, whose intelligence. <coughs> A foolish person with no intelligent discrimination is immediately aroused at the sight of a lusty woman, beautifully decorated with golden ornaments, fine clothing, and other cosmetic features. Being eager for sense gratification, such a fool loses all intelligence and is destroyed, just like the moth who rushes into the blazing fire. Purport. Actually, women have the power to attract men through all of the material senses. Men become lusty by seeing the body of a woman, by smelling her fragrance, by hearing her voice, by tasting her lips, and by touching her body. However, the foolish relationship based on material sex attraction begins by seeing, and thus rupa, or form, is very prominent in the process of ruining one's intelligence. This fact has been exploited in modern times by huge pornography industries, which prey on unfortunate men and women. The example of the foolish moth rushing into the fire and destroying itself is most appropriate in this regard. For one who becomes addicted to the momentary pleasure of sex indulgence certainly loses his power to understand the spiritual reality behind dull matter. A lusty person becomes blind and foolish through sex indulgence and his soul is lost in the fire of sense gratification. This whole disaster can be avoided by taking seriously to the process of chanting the name, holy names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Dama, Hare Dama, Rama Dama, Hare Hare. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his empowered representatives, such as Srila Prabhupada, have created a movement to save people from the dungeon of material life and we should all seriously take advantage of this opportunity. Om Akyana Timiran Tasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chakshun Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Jaina Bhutale Shrayam Rupakada Mayam Tadhati Shapadantikam Bande Hang Shri Guru Shri Jatapadakamalang Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Shagrajatam Shahagana Raganatan Vitam Stam Sajivam Sadvetam Shavadhutam Parijana Sehitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Shahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamstra He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute 
सप्ता कामशन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभ हनु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशा कौलपतुभ्य कृपा सिंधोभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअदैत गाधर श्रीवासरी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे योषिद धीर धीरण्या भरनाम्बरादि श्रव्यु माया रचितेशु मूर्धा प्रलोभितात्मा युपभोग बुद्धिया पतंगमन नशति नष्ट दृष्टि the abhuta brahman is describing what he's learned from different preachers whom he accepts as his gurus because he's received instruction from them and here the creature is the moth one time in nubrindavan shila prabhupad was doing a an initiation ceremony and while dealing with the fire he put a little stick into the sand at the base of the fire and held it up and he said this is very instructive because on the stick were some dead moths prabhupad said the fire does not jump out at the moth but the moth being attracted dashes into the fire so that's being described here the fire is attractive the each element has its characteristics for ether its sound for the earth its smell and for fire its form hmm its form so the attractive feature for the moth is the beautiful blazing form of the fire the moth becomes attracted by seeing and rushes headlong into the fire and dies so here the attractive form of the woman is compared to the fire into which the moth dashes the woman is attractive and the by seeing the beautiful woman the materialistic person uh, becomes attracted practically any person becomes attracted and then uh, mudha the foolish person uh, pralobhitatma becomes eager to enjoy pralobhita not just lobhita atma but pralobhita he wants to enjoy he wants to enjoy his got to enjoy got to enjoy now pralobhita atma upabhoga buddhya his he has his human intelligence but his intelligence becomes directed toward how to get this enjoyment this is animal intelligence prabhupad in the western countries they keep cats as pets so prabhupad said the cat is intelligent the cat doesn't jump up on the table if you have some milk there he doesn't jump up and get it he waits till you've left the kitchen then he jumps up and gets it so that's intelligence but the intelligence is directed toward sense gratification so the materialistic person under the influence of uh, lusty desires uh, uses his intelligence only for this how can i enjoy how can i enjoy how can i enjoy how can i enjoy actually nashta drishti uh, he's 
lost his intelligence. He's lost his ability to see straight. Uh, and therefore he's thinking, how can I enjoy, how can I enjoy, how can I enjoy? This way, that way, scheming, planning. Uh, this is my... The... Yes. This is for the person in the previous verse. Uh, the person who's ajatendriya, whose senses are uncontrolled. Drishtva striyam devamayam tad bhavair ajatendriya. Just seeing the woman, uh, devamaya, who's empowered by the illusory energy of the Lord. This has to do with the bodily platform. Pandita samadarshan, on the spiritual platform, everyone is atma, everyone is soul, everyone is a servant of Krishna. There's no difference, man, woman, dog, dog eater, elephant, Brahmin, all the same. But on the material platform, the bodies are created by, not by the spiritual energy. The bodies are not manifestations of the internal potency of the Lord. In the spiritual world they are. But in the material world, these bodies are creations, maya um, rachiteshu, manufactured by the illusory energy. Hmm? So, uh, Drishtva striyam devamaya, I'm seeing the beautiful form of the woman, and tad bhavaya, her, uh, her mood, her, her nature, how she moves, how she smiles, how she talks, the sound of her voice, the way she wears her clothes, the way she wears her hair, the everything, her whole nature becomes attractive to the ajatendriya, the person whose senses are uncontrolled. Uh, Palobhita, so he becomes mad after sense gratification. Patati, patati, ande, he falls into darkness. Tamasi, into ignorance. Agno patangabhat, the moth that enters the fire. So the, <coughs> this is the ultimate weapon of Maya. The, especially for uh, men, the form of woman. Uh, the, someplace second canto, maybe it said that Lord Brahma created so many living beings, but they weren't sufficiently entangled in the material activities, so he created the form of woman. That did it. Uh, then s sufficient entanglement was there. The, Pumsastriya maitini bhavametam tayoreto hridya grantamahu. This is how the, night, the knot of material attachment becomes tight. Asango hiyayam purusha. The living entity has nothing to do with the material energy. But when this sex attraction becomes prominent and the man and woman uh, become attracted to one another and get together, then hridya grantamahu, the taut, tight knot of material attraction or material attachment is tied. Griha, Kshetra, Apta, Vittai, Janasya Mohavyam, Ammameti. Then he wants a home, land, property. Uh, he becomes concerned with satisfying the relatives, money. Uh, in this way he becomes bewildered and he thinks in terms of I am this body, this is my wife, these are my children. This is my this, this is my this, this is my this, I am mine. So this illusion is there, and for the uh, man especially, the anchor for this illusion 
is attraction to woman, which begins with rupa, the apparently beautiful form of the woman. The, I was hearing a talk about, actually it was about the dangers of cell phones and their radiation. And the talk was being given by a scientist who happened to be a woman. And she mentioned that the, the, some case, a woman was keeping her cell phone in her bra and got cancer of the breast from excessive radiation. The, you could see the, the x-ray tracing the form of the phone on her, her breast. And cell phone usage is a topic for another day. But she said, you know, she was just analyzing as a scientist. She said the breast is mostly fat and liquids. And it's affected in this way and that way by radiation. So Maya Rachiteshu, you take some fat, you take some liquid, put it together, add the magic illusory power, and a man goes crazy. I've never seen anything like this in my whole life. Oh, my God. Uh, this is Maya. This topic is further discussed by Lord Kapildev in Third Canto. And Kali Yuga being what it is, I'll read it rather than rely on memory. <coughs> Teshvashanteshu mudheshu kanditatmas fasadhushu sangam nakuryat chosheshu yoshit krida mrigeshu cha. The Kapildev, Lord Kapildev warns uh, one should never associate with such a fool. Uh, who is that fool? A uh, coarse fool, a shanteshu, a sadhushu, who's uh, wicked or attached to that which is impermanent. Sangam Nakuryad, one should never associate with him. Choshyeshu, such a pitiful person. Who is that? Yoshid Krida Mrigeshu Cha. The man who's like a little dancing doll, a little dancing dog in the hands of a woman. The man who's uncontrolled becomes like that. Uh, the restriction of association with such foolish persons is especially meant for those who are in the line of advancement in Krishna consciousness. Advancement in Krishna consciousness involves developing the qualities of truthfulness, cleanliness, mercy, gravity, intelligence in spiritual knowledge, simplicity, material opulence, fame, forgiveness, control of the mind and senses, all these qualities are to be manifested with the progress of Krishna consciousness. But if one associates with a shudra, a foolish person who's like a dancing dog in the hands of a woman, he cannot make any progress. Lord Chaitanya has advised that any person engaged in Krishna consciousness who desires to pass beyond material nescience must not associate himself with women or with persons interested in material enjoyment. For a person seeking advancement in Krishna consciousness, such association is more dangerous than suicide. Niskinchanasya bhagavat bhajanon mukasya param param jagimishur bhavasagarasya. For one who wants to have no other possession than Krishna and wants to pass beyond the ocean of birth and death, san darshitam vishayinam atayoshitam cha. Then these two kinds of association should be avoided. Uh, vishayinam, the sense enjoyers, those who are addicted to sense enjoyment, because by their association, uh, it rubs off and we become addicted to sense enjoyment. So vishayinam, those who are dedicated to material enjoyment, atayoshitam cha. 
and the Association of Women for Material Enjoyment. Ha hanta hanta vishabhakshana This is worse than drinking poison. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's warning. In the previous verses, Lord Kapiladev has outlined all these good qualities, and he says they're all ruined by too much attachment to women and the association of those who are addicted to uh, women for sense enjoyment. Natatasya bhavain moho bandas chanya prasangataha yoshit sangad yata pumso yata tat sangi sangataha. What's the worst source of maya? What's the number one source of maya? Here, the infatuation and bondage, uh, moha, infatuation, illusion, bandha, and material entanglement uh, that uh, accrue to a man from attachment to any other object. Anya prasangat, even if one is intensely attached to some other thing. Yoshit sangat yata pumsa yata tat sangi sangataha. It's not as powerful as the attachment that results from uh, association with a woman or the fellowship of men who are attached to women. Uh, the, this is the complete form of. Maya. Attachment to women is so contaminating that one becomes attached to the condition of material life, not only by the association of women, but by the contaminated association of persons who are too attached to them. There are many reasons for our conditional life in the material world, but the topmost of all such causes is the association of women, as will be confirmed in the following stanzas. <clears throat> in Kali Yuga, association with women is very strong. In every step of life, there's association with women. If a person goes to purchase something, the advertisements are full of pictures of women. The physiological attraction for women is very great. It's wired in. And therefore, people are very slack in spiritual understanding. The Vedic civilization, being based on spiritual understanding, arranges association with women very cautiously. Out of the four social divisions, the members of the first order, namely Brahmacharya, the third order, Vanaprastha, and the fourth order, Sannyas, are strictly prohibited from female association. Only in one order, the householder, is there license to mix with women under restricted conditions. In other words, attraction for woman's association is the cause, the cause of the material conditioned life. And anyone interested in being freed from this conditional life must detach himself from the association of women. So this is the Vedic civilization. It, it knows the woman is like fire. In the Upanishads it said the woman is like fire, the man's like butter, you bring them together, the butter is not gonna stay a nice bar of butter, it's gonna melt. <clears throat> so sometimes what you want is melted butter. but not always. Fire is not bad. Fire is good. But fire is dangerous. It has to be managed very carefully. Hmm? If you have a fire place in your house, then you have all precautions so that your house won't catch fire. If you're in the kitchen, the, again, there's some careful arrangement so that the fire doesn't jump out and create problems. We've seen sometimes even Pujari is doing RT and 
Somehow or other, the lamp catches a piece of clothing. The fire is so dangerous. Therefore, it has to be handled very carefully. Water is not the same way. Water can be dangerous also, but you need like a typhoon or a tsunami or something. You know, a handful of water is not going to cause you a big problem, but a handful of fire. The fire has to be very carefully managed. And the Vedic civilization, because it's a civilization of spiritual progress, Arya, is very careful about association of men and women. It's allowed. Dharma virudha bhuteshu kamosmi paratarshapa. Krishna says association between men and women for begetting good children, which is not against uh, the principles of religion, that's me. He, he doesn't, we don't say no sex. But sex should be restricted. Brahmacharya life, no sex. Sannyas life, no sex. Vanaprastha life, no sex. Prabhupada says no association. It means no sex. The husband and wife may sometimes be together, but there's no sex in the Vanaprastha ashram. Only in the Grahastha ashram. That's where association, not only sex, but mixing. It's not brahmacharis, they can't have sex, but they can hang out with the girls and uh, joke and talk. No. Uh, smaranam kirtanam keli, prekshanam guyapashanam, sankalpa vyavaharascha, kali sampatirevacha. The yagyavalkya, describes different kinds of sex that the brahmachari avoids. Smaranam, thinking about sex. Kirtanam, talking about sex. You know, it should be Krishna kirtan, not uh, sex kirtan. Smaranam, kirtanam, and keli. Keli means playing around. Little jokes. Uh, Kaylee, play, playing, teasing. Smaranam kirtanam Kaylee, no jokes. Uh, prekshanam, uh, checking out the form of the woman. Uh, looking, studying the bodily features, Prabhupada sometimes said, of the woman. Prekshanam. Guya bhashanam to be talking with the woman privately about some, anything, guhyabhashanam, speaking privately with a woman, uh, guhyabhashanam, sankalpa, developing the, the plan, determination, I have to meet this girl, I have to, vyabhasayas uh, cha, uh, yes, uh, to be making plans using one's intelligence that way. And Kali Sampatir, finally having sex. Well, all of these are from subtle to gross. So Prekshanam is highlighted here, uh, seeing. Then what is the beginning, jayato vishaya pumsam sangasteshu pajayate. From seeing comes meditation, from meditation, uh, lust, then anger, then uh, buddhir nashat pranashati, then finally finished. So the Vedic civilization is totally unlike the modern civilization. Even the traditional Indian civilization is totally unlike what's going on in Bombay, Bangalore, Delhi. Because again, they've nashta drishti, they've lost their vision. Kalo nashta drisham esha. They've lost their vision. Therefore, Puranarko Dinodita, Bhagavatam is meant to give spiritual light in the age of Kali. 
people think that they're going to be happy by free association. Women think that now they're liberated from so many strictures. Men think this is pretty good. But the result is that everyone suffers more. Marriage becomes a myth or a, uh, yeah, it just becomes a reflection of what marriage is supposed to be. Uh, family life becomes disturbed. Everyone becomes unhappy. There's a, an Indian feminist journal I think it's out of print right now, called Manushri, in which the editor has argued that in the context of Indian society, the Western style women's liberation is a disaster for women. Lose their respectability, lose their power, become exploited like anything and thinking, yes, we're, we're free, we're liberated, we're... So Manush Smriti, the woman should always be protected in childhood by her father, in youth by her husband, in old age by her sons. Naiva Svatantra Maharasi, they should never be independent uh, everything becomes ruined. How down things have become. I was mentioning to someone yesterday that I was on an early flight in some, new, some American airport and the staff was just coming on duty, the check-in staff at the counters. So the, the men were g gathering and, you know, checking into their computers women, everybody. So a, a woman comes to work, throws her arms around one of the men. Hi, Jack. That's just good morning. And no one turns around and says, what's going on here? That's just normal. So this is, again, this is the result of ignorance. This is the result of the influence of Kali Yuga. Uh, and it leads to nothing good. Tasma, uh, ya Shastra Vidamutsrija Vartate Kamakarata Na Sasidhim Avapnoti Na Sukham Na Paramgatim if we think all oh, this Shastra is like, oh, you know, totally out of date. These are what our, our great grandparents used to believe in. These are old strictures that don't apply anymore in our real life. What will be the result? Nasa Siddhim of Apnoti. One will not be able to become perfect. Nasukam. Uh, One won't be happy, materially or spiritually. Na sasukam, na avapnoti, na sukam, na paramgatim. And one will not attain the ultimate goal of life to go back home, back to Godhead. Tasmat shastra pramanam te, karya Yes, kama karta, if one acts, is, acts according to one's desires, lust, then no happiness, no perfection, no back to Godhead. Therefore, one has to follow Shastra. Prajapati swam duhitaram drishtva tad rupa dharshitaha rohit bhutam so anvadhavad riksharupi hatatrapaha. Even Lord Brahma, Prajapati swam duhitaram drishtva. My daughter is very beautiful. He became attracted, tat rupa, by her beautiful form, darshita, and became bewildered. So rohit putam sa anuvatat, 
he uh, shamelessly ran up to her. She took the form of a deer. He took the form of a stag. Even Brahma, Tadrupa. Therefore, matra svasra duhitra va na vivikdasana bhavet balavan indriya grama vidvam samapikarshati. The senses are so strong that even a, a learned person may be attracted by the form of woman. And therefore, one shouldn't sit alone, even with one's mother one's daughter, matra, one's sister. Someone says, well, yeah, if you're a, a sudra, you're that kind of person. No, vidvamsam, even a learned person, even Brahma can be bewildered by this. It is best, therefore, to practice controlling the senses by performing bhakti yoga, engaging in the service of Madan Mohan. Lord Krishna's name is Madan Mohan, for he can subdue the god Cupid or lust. Only by engaging in the service of Madan Mohan can one curb the dictates of Madan, Cupid. Otherwise, attempts to control the senses will fail. The our own power to control the senses will not be sufficient. And there are so many examples in history. Um, but by the grace of Madan Mohan, who bewilders even Cupid, Cupid bewilders everyone, but Krishna bewilders Cupid. So Tat Rupa, if one becomes attracted to this form, the form of Krishna, then the material form becomes, what is that? less attractive. Still it's dangerous, but by intelligence and by superior attraction, one knows this is not where I want to be. Tat shrishta shrishte, what is that? Tat shrishta shrishta shrishte shu kon vakandita di puman. Rishim Narayanamrite Yoshid Mayehamaya. No one is immune to this. Amongst all the living entities begotten by Brahma, men, demigods, animals, none but Narayan Rishi is immune to the attraction of Maya in the form of woman. I'm not immune, you're not immune, Brahma is not immune, only Narayan Rishi is immune. You know the story, he was performing tapasya. Narayan Rishi is the incarnation of Krishna. He was performing tapasya. As usual, Indra thought, uh-oh, he's performing tapasya, he may take my post. So he did the usual thing. He sent the apsaras down to distract him from his meditation. And the apsaras did their usual thing, dancing and tinkling ankle bells and smiles and the whole repertoire of attractive behavior. But Narayan Rishi expanded uh, equally beautiful apsaras or more beautiful apsaras from his own body. Now the apsaras, Indra's apsaras were frustrated. Prabhupada quotes, the sweet, meat, uh, sweet, sweet maker has no taste for sweet meats. You know, we pass by a sweet shop and it's like, whoa. But the sweet maker sits there all day and he's not attracted. He's not thinking, well, I could have another rasgula, I could have a chum chum. So Krishna or Narayan Rishi, he's not affected by attraction to the form of woman. Everyone else is. Throughout Throughout the entire material world, beginning from Brahma down to the small, insignificant creatures like the ant, everyone is attracted by a sex life. What is it that the ant is getting? 
Who would get excited about the happiness that the ant, the, the ecstasy, the, the fulfillment that the ant is going to get from sex life? But the ant is thinking, this is the best. So everyone is attracted by sex life. That is the basic principle of this material world. Lord Brahma's being attracted by his daughter is the vivid example that no one is exempt from sexual attraction to woman. Woman, therefore, is the wonderful creation of Maya to keep the conditioned soul in shackles. Balam me pasha maya ya, stri maya jayeno disham, ya kuroti pada krantan, bruvi drimbhena kevalam. Just try to understand the mighty strength of my maya in the shape of woman, who by the mere movement of her eyebrows can keep even the greater, greatest conquerors of the world under her grip. And Prabhupada uh, cites Cleopatra, who controlled uh, Mark Antony, Julius Caesar. So, again, Prabhupada makes the point that we have to be attracted by Madan Mohan, by Krishna. Uh, Two sides. One is that one should be very careful. Prabhupada said even on the royal road there can be a disaster, an accident. So these principles of actually culture. It's not like great austerity or great something. This is culture which is now being thrown out the window. This is not even Krishna consciousness. This is just human culture. You go to an Indian village, I think still, <laughs> and you don't see men hanging out with women and cutting jokes and talking and just, um, no. You can't do that. The ordinary Indian villager is more cultured than the most sophisticated New Yorker because he knows that fire and butter should not mix. Matravat Paradareshu. That the women are like my mothers, that's all. Arjun avoided trouble that way <laughs> the, when he went to the heavenly planets. That you're my mother, you're connected with Indra, Indra's my father. Matravat Paradareshu. Except for one's wife, all the women are mothers. The, in Latin America, still it's current that a woman is selling flowers and someone will a ask, Madre, quanto, uh, quanto vale esto? Mother, how much are these flowers? And if she's a little girl, Madrecita, quante vale, vale esto? Little mother, how much are these flowers? This is culture. Madrecita, quante vale esto? So that culture should be there, and on that we build Krishna consciousness. The men should be self-controlled. They should keep their minds fixed on Krishna. The women should be self-controlled. They should keep their minds on Krishna. The business of women in Kali Yuga is to, you know, en enhance the packaging, see-through packaging, shrink wrap, whatever whatever will attract. Prabhupada said, my mother wouldn't go next door to accept an invitation unless she was carried in a covered palanquin by four men. But now it's like the woman is dressed to agitate the minds of everyone. So for women, Modesty, shyness, self-control, uh, engagement in the service of Krishna. 
so that she won't become entangled in all of these things or entangle others. Uh, then she becomes uh, pure and becomes an inspiration for her husband and her family in Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, Trishu Dushtashu Varshneya Jayate Varna Sankara. This is Kali Yuga. All right, we'll stop here and see what questions there might be. Yes. We're not there yet. Mm -mm, we're still not there. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. What's happening? Oh, there it is. Hari bol. Hari bol. Okay, uh, uh, okay uh, my question is about free will. About? Uh, free will. What is free will free exactly? Will. Means uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that every individual entity has his free will. And now we are in a fallen state due, due to free will. And uh, because of free will, we are conditioned. And we uh, get transmigration of soul. And due to this free will, uh, we are, uh, means, uh, like sometimes in human form of life, sometimes animal form of life, sometimes uh, demigods. So due to this free will, we are like, uh, like, like getting transmigration. So uh, what is exactly free will and, and due to Krishna consciousness, how this free will, we once again get reinstated to our original position in the spiritual world. Uh, just, like free, just like you see a beautiful woman. So you can gradually make your way in her direction and say, hi, are you from around here? Can I help you? Or you can grab your beads and say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Dham, Hare Dham, 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 Hare. That's free will. Krishna. About uh, pure duty, the, in 11 Canto, in 11, 14, 23, chapter number 23, it is mentioned that if one's hair do not stand on the end, how can the heart melt? And if the heart doesn't, does not melt, how can tears of love fro flow from the eyes? If one does not cry in the spiritual happiness, how can one render loving service of the Lord? And without such service, how can the consciousness be purified? And 24, a devotee who but speaks... Before you go on, um, huh? questions should be about the class. Is this about the class or is this about this verse on which you'd like a comment? Okay. Next question. Questions about the class have priority. If we have extra time, we can talk about other things. Yes, there's a question over here. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. In one of the purport, Srila Prabhupada writes that the philosophies of Gautam, Kanad, Patanjali, and Datatre, they are like the sharks in an unfathomable ocean. They are like a sharks shark, in the ocean. Shark. And uh, Chaitanya Chaitramut also states that these philosophies are like koti janme na paibe nistar, means after even, even after millions of lifetime, one cannot surpass this. Is it because of the reason that the kind of uh, gurus that are described in this philosophy... Is it because of what? The kind First of, of all, gurus. this is also connected to the class or not? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. Let's hear it. 
the 24 gurus that are described in this philosophy, uh -huh. the conditioned soul can choose many more such personalities from the nature's basket, something like the movement of a sunflower. Yeah. And one can choose it as a guru and yes. still cannot come to the conclusion about the supreme personality of Godhead. Yes. So is it because of this reason that the Srila Prabhupada writes that the Dattatre philosophy is also one of the sharks and it can devour any conditioned soul? Yeah, there are two things. The Avaduta Brahman is basically learning from nature. He's learning from the honeybee, he's learning from the moth, he's learning from so many, from the elephant, he's learning from all these creatures. So that means that he's learning lessons by observing nature. That's a little safe. When you get into the atheist Kapila and the different mm, darshans, different philosophies that are non-theistic, that don't focus on devotional service to the Lord, then one becomes bewildered. One becomes bewildered. If one accepts a Mayavadi as a guru, a materialist as a guru, the, those who have everything as atoms, it's just all due to atoms. There's so many different philosophies. If one takes instruction there, then he's lost. Therefore, a Vaishnava guru or nasyat. Vaishnava swapacho guru. Sat karma nipano vipra. Even if one is a highly qualified Brahmin with so many different uh, qualifications, if he's not a Vaishnav, one shouldn't accept him. And even if one is a dog eater, if he's a Vaishnav, all right, he can become a guru. Is that all right? Maya Bhadi Bhasya Shunile Hoy Sarbanash. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, don't hear the Maya Bhadi, don't even hear it. Why? By hearing it, you lose everything. It's presented in so attractive language and smart arguments and so many things. And we start to think, well, yeah. <laughs> and then everything's lost. Uh, what happened to your microphone? Did they take it away? So, so what? Body body, Shunit, Sarvanash, even you lost your microphone. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so what exactly is the negative point about Dattatre philosophy? What's the? What exactly is the negative point about Dattatre philosophy? About Dattatreya's philosophy? I'm not quite sure, I'd have to see. But they're all more or less non -the You get karma mimamsa, everything's for karmic, uh, pious activities for advancement, you get the atomic theory, you get impersonalism, you get all of these things. That the tray I haven't studied, but again, it, it'll come in these different categories. Not Krishna, that's the point. Vedaishtra Sarvaira Hame Vedya. All the Vedas are meant for understanding Krishna, and all these other philosophies are meant for pointing us someplace else. Therefore, they should be avoided. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, uh, how to disassociate with the Rupa, Ras, Sparsha, How to Ganda disassociate? From the Rupa, Ras, Sparsha, and Ganda in practical From life. Rupa, Ras, Sparsha, you can't disassociate. You can't, you can't say, okay, from today, I won't see any forms, I won't taste anything, I won't hear anything. That's not possible. But from today, I'll see the form of Krishna every day. I'll hear Krishna Kata. I'll taste the remnants of food offered to Krishna. That's possible. Uh, in the fourth canto, instructions of the Kumaras, what is that? Uh, hmm? Someone know? What verse is that? Yat pada pankaja palasa vilasa bhaktya. Udgratiyanti santa tadvanna rikta matiyo yatiyo birudhas shrotoganas tadadanam bhajavasadeva. That the Mayavadis or impersonalists or yogis have a very hard time stopping the waves of material desire. That's their program. They control 
by yogic power, by power of gyan. They want to stop the senses. Because they know my senses are getting me in trouble. So I have to stop the senses from their mischief. Pratyahar. I'm eating, I have to stop eating. Feeding the senses. I'm not going to feed them anymore. They're getting, in trouble, getting me in trouble. But it's very difficult. But yat pada pankaja palasa vilasa bhaktiya, those who become attracted to the lotus petal feet of the personality of Godhead, for them it's easy. Pajavasudeva. Therefore, engage in the devotional service of Vasudeva, Krishna, the sense rishikena rishikesha sevanam. Uh, the senses should be engaged in relationship to Krishna. Savai mana Krishna padad of India. Maharaj Ambarish engaged his mind, first of all, in thinking of Krishna, then his body in serving the, the Lord, his ears in hearing, his tongue in speaking, all of these things. Something else. Thank you, Maharaj, for uh, elaborating on the segregation of duties of different ashrams. Uh, my question is uh, in regards to the uh, marriage uh, where uh, we see nowadays uh, uh, young boys and girls take long time to take the decision and uh, how, as what steps we can take and what uh, as a ESCON organization we should take steps to provide the importance of marriage and uh, because they have a wrong notion that, okay, let me be alone and I can do bhakti nicely. If, if, you, than if, if you start when, the, when they're like 18, 20, it's already a lost cause. These things, you know, the fathers wake up when their daughter is 25 and start thinking, maybe she should get married. Till then they're thinking about her career. This is all backwards. It's all backwards. Somehow or other, things have gone down and people think that what women really need is a career. And so the marriage is put off till she's educated. Educated means she goes to college. College means she's unfit for marriage. So the, maybe it's radical, but it's not, this, the tradition is that the uh, parents choose, not the boy and girl. They're the least qualified. They don't know anything. They only know what they're attracted to. And that's stated in 12th Canto of Bhagavatam. In Kali Yuga, marriage will just be on the basis of attraction. And attraction, liking, means what I like today, I dislike tomorrow. And who are the losers, especially the women? The, the guy marries her, or now it's not even marriage. In the West, it's, now it's become very standard. First you live together, and then if you like it, then you get married. Because marriage is so, you know, 50% failure rate, so nobody wants to be in a failure, so they want to test it first and make sure that it's stable. So first they live together and have sex. And if it's working, then after maybe a couple years or whatever it is, then they get married. And then it doesn't work anyway. <laughs> because the whole thing was based on physical attraction. And especially, when are women most attractive? When they're young. So if the guy doesn't ditch her, dump her, when she's 25, 26, 28, by the time she's 40, 50, forget it. There are all these beautiful 20-year-olds that I could hook up with. Why am I carrying around this old baggage? So again, when it's based on physical attraction, the women are the big losers and the children because they're, you know, two days a week with their father, two days a week with their mother, you know, that kind of thing. And one month with this one, one month with that one. 
Now, how will they be happy? Even material happiness, forget spiritual happiness for the moment. Material happiness means family life. The mama bear, the papa, uh, papa bear, and the baby bears. That's material happiness. You don't even get that in Kali Yuga. The mama bears found an, a new papa bear, papa's found a new mama bear, and the baby bears are totally confused. Everything goes down and down. Therefore, the Vedic system is that the parents take the responsibility. And that also from a young age. If you take an old stick and try and bend it, it doesn't bend. Therefore, they were married at a young age, and the parents would take all care. What is the qualification of the boy? What is the qualification of the girl? What is the astrological consideration? Everything. Then they would... And then it was fixed. You could not break that. Therefore, practically, divorce was unheard of in Indian society. Only recently, now everything's challenging the American standard. So you get a 50% divorce rate in Bombay. But this is the responsibility of the parents, to see that the boy and girl are fixed up. That's more important than career. It's more important than so many other things. They should be nicely married and Krishna conscious. That's the most important thing. Now every Thank these societies going, you know, that's like what? They're yeah, it's, it's like this is barbaric. The woman doesn't have freedom to choose? What is this? You know, the international community has to get involved here. And then the international community gets involved and they make their propaganda and the, the girl is, is, now she's free to choose and the guy is free to choose also. So he chooses to enjoy this girl, that girl and throw them away like old rags. And no one's happy. Not even materially happy. Tasmat Shastra Pramanta. Therefore one should follow Shastra. We don't think that the materialists have figured out something better. And Shastra had it right. Has it right. Is that okay? Okay, you get a second chance. Uh, my, my question is regarding marriage only, like uh, you said that... Uh, 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 okay, my question is regarding marriage. You said in this, uh, today's class that uh, mm -hmm. men, men should be far from women association. They, uh, they should not have women association. So is it uh, proper to be remain single the whole entire life and not get married in Krishna consciousness? Sure. And practice Krishna consciousness and not practice temple life but staying in house and practicing Krishna consciousness. <laughs> That's my question. Because people get either married or stay in temple in, in this moment. So, is it better, to, can you stay unmarried your whole life and not move into temple? Sure. We don't require you to live in the temple. If you can stay in your house and be uh, a brahmachari in your house, it's wonderful. And not have women knocking on your door and you don't go knocking on their door, then it's very good. But it's harder. You know, these boys who are brahmacharis here, they have so many other brahmacharis, friends and advisors and confidants and man is a social animal. If you don't have friends, other men, then some girl comes and says, can I be your friend? <laughs> No, one doesn't have to live in the temple, one can live anywhere, but the temple is such an advantage. The ashram is such an advantage. Something else? Wherever the microphone goes, I don't control it. <clears throat> regarding the previous question, Maharaj, regarding that Sparsha Rupa, he was asking, 
how to disassociate. He said, no, we cannot de disassociate. We have to engage in Krishna consciousness. So I was just thinking in ISKCON, even devotees have been doing that for years now. You know, deity worship and chanting, hearing. But still, why the success rate is so less of renounced order in ISKCON? Mama Maya Durachaya. <laughs> Maya is powerful. There are different contributing factors. The number one contributing factor mentioned here is women are beautiful. And the man who's not strongly fixed becomes attracted. Or even the man who is strongly fixed. Tadasya harati pragyam vairanavam ivambasi. Somehow his, he gets distracted and then his mind gets carried away and it's lost. So the material world is dangerous. It's, the Katu Upanishad has said the path of spiritual realization is like the razor's edge. Little inattention and can get cut. Also the success rate is less because we think that we're better than we are. We think that, yeah, these rules are important, especially in the beginning, when you're new to Krishna consciousness. But once you're a little fixed up, once you're you know, strongly situated, then it's not such a, a big deal. You know, so the, I'm the pujari and, and uh, Sita Dasi is bringing the flowers and we have a little chit chat every day and you know, it's just Krishna consciousness. And then next thing is, he wants to kidnap Sita Dasi. <laughs> <coughs> no one ever fell down from Krishna consciousness by being too strict about association of women. Yes. Maharaj, uh, in continuation to your answer of, uh, you mentioned that training needs to be given right from childhood and uh, the importance of marriage needs to be uh, mm. explained and uh, marrying a girl early age. So, which would be seen kind of have you gone mad hmm? so the so people may say or even the family members will also say that have you gone mad because yeah, they may say have you gone mad so because we it's not seen but when your, nowadays when your daughter is is floating around in college and mixing with so many boys they won't say she's gone mad she'll say so how is her, what is her grade average Sanasha, Yanasha, Sarvabhutanam, Tasyam Jagati, Samyami, Tasyam Jagati Bhutani, Sanasha, Pashitomute. What they think is day, we think is night. What, hmm? And what we think is day, they think is night. So naturally, the, the, the relatives or friends, they may have, have you gone mad? You chant Hare Krishna, they were already, have you gone mad? You want to do devotional service? Why? You want to. Because Kamo Papoga Parama Itabhadivy Mr. They think that to gratify the senses is the ultimate goal of life. Uh, they may have a nice way of putting it, but that's their that's their goal. To be the most I can be, to achieve success, whatever it is, it all comes down to sense gratification. And that's not our goal, and that's not the goal recommended in Bhagavatam. Kama Syanendriya Pritir, Labo Jiveta Yavata, Jivasya Tatvijigyasa, Narto Yasjaya Karvipi. Life is meant for spiritual realization, not for sense enjoyment. So, what we need to satisfy the senses, that's all right, not more. And their philosophy is more, more, more. And the result is more miserable, more miserable, more miserable. 
So let them say what they want. We don't care. Maharaj, I understand that it is a parent's responsibility. Mm. But uh, I just want, it's, it's my understanding or it's my feeling is that ESCON as an organization has to give some platform where people can contribute and people can come to that kind of, uh, where we can provide such kind of education to our small kids and have that kind of environment. So, Don't wait sure. for ESCON. Your daughter will be a grandmother by the time <laughs> things get together. <clears throat> the ISKCON is, no, it's the, and according to Shastra, it's the father's responsibility. Father can't say, well, ISKCON didn't do this, ISKCON didn't provide that. Don't stick it on ISKCON. It's the father's job. No, it's not that I'm blaming <laughs> ISKCON, but it's basically I'm talking about giving a platform where. Uh, we, this is the platform where Bhagavatam is here, where the knowledge is here. One can take advantage of all of these things. But it, it's not that ISKCON has to take the responsibility to see that your daughter gets a good husband. That's the father's responsibility. Now maybe as ISKCON grows and so on, there'll be, you know, I, I think there's already an arrangement here in Radhagopinath Temple. They see who's interested in getting married and they, consult and so on. So there may be some facility, but if you just wait for that, that's negligence. ISKCON will grow, ISKCON will mature, maybe ISKCON will develop <coughs> networks and you know, so many things. But finally, just like in a village, you know, they, there's somebody who knows, there's a girl over here, there's a boy over here, and they, they get it together. So these things develop. But meanwhile, whose responsibility is it? Who had the children? Not that ISKCON gave birth to all these children. <laughs> <laughs> so parenthood means responsibility. And that's part of the responsibility. And now they've, they've made They've sent things haywire. It's the father's responsibility to send his daughter through college and pay for it, and if possible, send her to England or America and all of that. But that's not Shastric vision. Thank you, Maharaj. <coughs> or wherever. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I am a Grastha and uh, as I see my life, I am actually living uh, all the four ashrams at different times. <laughs> uh, sometimes I am Brahmachari when I am studying and, uh, and uh, when I am uh, fulfilling the duties of a Grastha and I am Grastha and Sannyas and Vanprastha again. Hmm? I want to know ki I didn't follow. I couldn't. Okay. Sometimes you're brahmachari, sometimes no, you're grahasta. Sense, I got that from the beginning. <laughs> in a sense, ke, uh, when I'm uh, performing the duties, what brahmacharis do like uh, japa and puja and all, uh, I'm that's not for puja, that time. No, no, puja and, and japa and all, that's not brahmachari dharma. That's for everyone. Okay. It's not that the puja is for the brahmacharis. Puja is actually, especially for the householders. Brahmacharis, prachar, and so many things. Puja is especially for the householders so that the center of their home will be Krishna. Otherwise, the center becomes something else. So the puja is for the grihastas. The japa is for the grihastas. These things are for everyone. Uh, I want to know in this context, okay, how to do matlab, uh, two things simultaneously like uh, engaging my mind all the activities related to Krishna and doing the our basic duties towards our, to run the household. Yes, Prabhupada explained that by an example given by the Acharyas 
One has to mold one's, just like a, a man, <coughs> he's working, and you go to his desk and there's a picture of his wife and his family. Because actually if it weren't for his wife and family, he wouldn't work. And that's why he's there. And while he's at work, he's thinking, what is she doing, what's going on? So Prabhupada gives a, a vivid example that a woman is married and she has, apart from her husband, a lover. So she's doing her housework, she's doing it more seriously than before she had a lover, so that her husband won't find out. She's very dutiful. But her mind is always, what is he doing now? Is he thinking of me? When will we meet? That's lover consciousness. So Prabhupada said, if lover consciousness, why not Krishna consciousness? The same principle. I'm Mamanusmara Yujacha. Krishna said, think of me and fight. Hmm? We just have to learn the art. Uh, uh, but in that case, uh, is it possible to concentrate on that particular work and thinking all the time of... Yeah, it's not like... Uh, this is explained someplace by the Acharyas. It's not that you're like doing a, a actuarial, actuarial calculation and at the same time trying to fix your mind on the rasa dance. You'll, you'll wind up schizophrenic. Y you can't do that. But the basic principle of all my activities should be for Krishna. Therefore, the, the householders are advised to give charity. Why am I working? To get money, right? If they don't pay me, I don't show up. So I'm working to get money, and then with the money I'll spend for my family affairs, I'll spend for eating, I'll spend for the house, I'll spend for this. But if you give charity, and then while working you're thinking, I'm making the money, I'm going to add this to my house, I'm going to do that. But if you give charity, then you're thinking that by this work I'm able to give charity. And that charity means give to Krishna. Uh, it should be done for Krishna. So by that principle that I'm working not for myself, I'm working for Krishna. Then I come home, the deity is there, the house belongs to Krishna. Uh, the people in the house belong to Krishna. So everything starts to be arranged in such a way that Krishna is the center of everything. So then you think of Krishna. Is that okay? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, my question is, uh, since we are talking about uh, association with women in today's uh, lecture, uh, you mentioned that brahmacharis are not supposed to associate with women, hmm. and a grihast is supposed to associate only with his wife. Hmm. What if a grihast associates with other women and a brahmachari associates with women, but uh, to hear about the pastimes of Krishna? Is that said, said that again? The, the man is married, but he's associating with other women. Or the Brahmacharya is associating with women yeah, yeah. and they're talking about the pastimes of Krishna? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that pastime will lead to other pastimes. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is, this is one question that was bothering me for a very long time. Thank you. There was one very prominent American feminist who came to India and she was expecting to see that the you know, women are all pounded down and all that. And she came to India and she loved it because she saw that the women had their own society. You know, the women are hanging out with other women. They have their whole world that they're working in. And it's not all you know, about, about men all the time. 
you know, hanging out with men or working with men and trying to get the better of men and trying to, you know, getting angry at men. The women have a whole society. So she, she appreciated that. So Prabhupada summarized. He said, man is good and woman is good. But man and woman together are not good. So it should be restricted. In family life, it's also good. Men and women have a reason to associate. That also within regulative principles, then it's good. Otherwise, not good. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So Maharaj, as we're talking about uh, you know, sex, attract <clears throat> sex attraction between men and women, so in a grasp life, there is attraction between husband and wife. So can you please tell us at what stage does this attraction go away completely? At what stage does the attraction between husband and wife go away completely? Prabhupada tells that story about Akbar. He asked his minister, you know, when does this sex attraction go away? How long does it last? And he said it lasts up to the end of life. And I guess it was Akbar. He said, I don't, I don't believe it. So then the, sometime later, the minister uh, called him and said, come with me and bring your daughter. So they went this way, that way, and they came to, the, to a house. And he said, there's a dying man there. He said, watch his eyes. They went into the house. The dying man was there. The king came in. The daughter came in. The man's eyes went right to the daughter. So this attraction stays up to the end of life. One is still thinking, let me enjoy, let me enjoy. Oh, so husband and wife, attraction is natural. Therefore, Vanaprastashram is there. Slacken, you know, there's a, a tight knot of family affection. Even in Krishna consciousness, it's maybe not as tight as the materialistic night, knot, but there's a, a tight relationship. In the Vanaprastashram, now we have to loosen that knot. So in the Vanaprastashram, no sex. In the Vanaprastashram, materialistic activities are set aside. The Vanaprastashram, we don't go from wedding to graduation to uh, this ceremony, that ceremony. It's, it's more chanting, it's more hearing, it's more serving, maybe visiting holy places, uh, but reducing that attachment. Then after Vanaprastashram, when 25 years, the attachment is now more slack, more slack, then sannyas. Even in sannyas, Prabhupada said, sometimes I think of my wife. And some thought will come. Uh, but it's not taken seriously. Oh, I miss my wife. No. Some, something is there. And it was like, oh, I remember when I was 10 years old, something, something, but it's, I'm not going back to that. So the, uh, the whole theme is reducing our material attraction and increasing our spiritual attraction. Therefore, first of all, brahmachari training, so that one has this solid foundation, how to control the mind, how to control the senses, how to be Krishna conscious. Then grahastha life focused on Krishna consciousness because if you build it up more, 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 this material attraction, how are you ever going to get out? If we just expand materially more and more, then contracting becomes difficult or giving up becomes more difficult. Therefore, in grahastha life also, the theme should be Krishna consciousness. That's the central theme. In relation to that, everything's there but it's in relation to Krishna. And it's not boosted up and pumped up and expanded to meet, you know, what your friends and relatives think of as normal life. It's minimal. Uh, 
Jivas Yatat Pajigyasa. Husband and wife are together for spiritual progress. Then they can come to the Vanaprastha Ashram, then sannyas may be there. That's the Vedic system. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Maharaj. You. Shall we obey the hands of time up there? Hare Krishna. What? Tell me what to do. I see hands and I... Who's in charge here? That's not me. Someone has to tell me what to do. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for the wonderful class. Now that we have already started giving our children, fortunately or unfortunately, the modern education, and they are already into graduation, now what to do now to minimize the damage or to prevent the culture? What to do, to, this becomes another class. The, the children are already in advanced education and what to do and, and so on. Number one, this is out, out of my area of expertise, and number two, it takes two hours to answer the question. But I can say in summary, it's more difficult, isn't it? Now your daughter is 26 and you're thinking about talking to her about marriage, it will be more difficult. She's not going to be thinking, well, what do my parents want me to do? It's more difficult. Now, how you manage, that's a, a separate question. But my theme is don't let it become more difficult make it you know make it simple fire dead and disease should be dealt with early if you you can deal with it later but it's harder so this is like that it should be dealt with timely Anything else? Shall we stop? Shall I stop? Okay. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Hare. Hare Krishna, there is very strong.